Hello and good morning. You're watching The Mining Show brought to you by Blythe Way on Core Finance. And I'm Charlie Gibson, now one of those parts of the world that has uh, been in the news recently. Well, maybe not so much recently, but certainly you'll recognise it when I tell you. Uh, has very much been in the news over the course of the last uh, few months is Korea, the Korean Peninsula, South Korea, and obviously uh, North Korea. Now, uh, some would say that uh, <laughs> the, where there's, uh, the, there are opportunities um, in these sorts of parts of the world, and uh, one such company that is uh, hoping uh, to make the most of the opportunities, perhaps presented the, uh, presenting themselves at the moment on the Korean Peninsula, is uh, Bluebird Merchant Ventures. And joining me now uh, is Aidan Bishop, one of the directors of the company. Uh, Aidan, very good morning. Thank you very much indeed for, uh, for joining us. Thank and you. I see that you are looking to open South, reopen South Korea's, and we should stress South Korea's here, second largest gold mine. Yes, I mean, it, it, the Gubong mine, it's, a, it's an old mine uh, with historical significance in South Korea. It opened in the beginning of the 1900s and closed in 1971. It is a, it is a huge, huge underground gold mine. There's over 100 kilometres of uh, tunnel infrastructure. There's uh, shaft infrastructure there. So it's, it's, it's a very large mine. And the company is in the process of reopening that mine. And where, where is the mine geographically within South Korea? It's about two hours or two or three hours from Seoul. It's uh, the great, uh, in, there's a lot of infrastructure and obviously an advanced economy like South Korea that we can access within 100 metres of our mine on, on good roads. So it's very accessible. The power infrastructure is there. Um, at one time it was reported that this mine employed over 20,000 people. So the whole town of Gubong historically was built around this mine. So there's a big advantage for us over other mines that we haven't got to build ports, we haven't got to build roads, we haven't got to um, bring power infrastructure in, it's all there. I was going to say, of course, most importantly, you've got the Winter Olympics coming up, haven't you? So, I mean, I dare say there'll be an opportunity for a, an analyst site visit. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> but when you think, a lot of people watching this, when they think of South Korea, they'll think of Samsung, they'll think of LG, they'll think of high-end electronics, they'll think of, you know, one of the, one of the great post-war success uh, stories, but they'll think of a, a high-tech uh, manufacturing nation, probably. They won't actually think of it in mining terms. Does it have a mining history? I mean, obviously, this mine, if it employed 20,000 people, does have quite a, a, a mining history, but um, does it in terms of, of, of the skills and the labour force and as well as the infrastructure, does it have everything you need to open this mine? That's a great question. And South Korea changed, as you pointed out, it's from a base economy to a technology, electronics um, type of economy, and has obviously done very well. Uh, there is some history of mining in, in South Korea, and we were put onto this opportunity by uh, somebody who was the former chief geologist of Ivanhoe, and he led three discoveries, Doug Kerwin, who's a technical advisor to the company. Um, he found, did three discoveries in South Korea that all went into production um, with Ivanhoe. So there is a history of, of mining in, in South Korea. Um, we're looking to revitalize that. The government give, are giving all kinds of incentives um, to revitalize the mining industry. So one of the challenges is around the labor force. The skill sets are not there. Uh, given the shift into uh, tech, so we are able to, uh, we'll have to bring import some labour, but we'll have to use technology to be very efficient. And the good thing nowadays is that when you uh, have a plant, you don't need to have like hundreds or thousands of people to operate this. It can really be done on a very, uh, on a very lean basis. So what we're trying to do in reopening this mine is to delineate enough ore for the first three years of our mining, and then take it right into production. So it's a fast track production is what we're targeting. Okay, so what have you got at the moment? Is there a resource there at the moment? And if so, how big is it? And what grade is it? And, and how much exploration do you need to do to get it up to the required size? Well, our exploration is, is different from a, a greenfield type of project. So there is a resource, not a Jork resource, the Korean resources, which are not the same as Jork, but they are logical. Um, it's a couple of million tons at about seven grams uh, from memory. Historical production records suggest that about half a million ounces have been mined, although the infrastructure um, suggests that they didn't report anywhere near what was really mined. So from records that we could see, they were mining about nine grams a ton and getting recovered 
a grade of about seven grams a ton. So it's a very, very good grade there. And we we just announced this morning that we're expecting in early January to be able to release some assay results from underground sampling to confirm that the grades are still there. One of the questions I get asked is, well, the mine closed. So did it close because all the resources were gone? So you said mine, it closed in 1971. 1971. When, when Nixon closed the dollar window. <laughs> Gold was thirty-five dollars now. In, in, right? so in fact, they called the bottom of the market perfectly. In, indeed, I, I was one year old at the time, Charlie. Our, <laughs> our chief operating officer, Charles Barkley, just celebrated his birthday recently, and I believe started mining at about that, that particular time. He won't like me for saying that. <laughs> he certainly uh, won't. <laughs> but um, sorry, Charlie. Um, but. Um, yeah, the, the gold price was very low, and uh, of course, so that would have meant that what was not economic in, in those times is now economic and payable today. So, and of course, technology has advanced, and yeah, we we are expecting there to be like when in any time of mine closed that they left a lot behind. So that is really what we are targeting as as our, as our bread and butter. So I assume that what there is is a honeycomb of tunnels in in there at the moment. Do you know how many shafts there are and, and are it, it, how much of that infrastructure is serviceable? So when we uh, took the project on, the first thing was to uncover all the adits because they buried this mine really, really well. Mm. So we started uncovering uh, the adits and we found some of the shafts. So you're, it, it, you're going into the side of a hill, is that? It's yeah. It's 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 onto it's onto a hill, and it's it's. We initially thought it was about about 1,500 meters deep. It turned out it's about 500 meters deep um, from re-examining the old plans. So we've been able to get in a few hundred meters inside the mine so far, and we've been very impressed with uh, the infrastructure that is there. The tunnels are in in in, in good condition. The shafts uh, haven't been used 50 years. Concrete line shaft. And, and, and still in good condition. So it's a significant saving to the company. In today's terms, it costs about $3,000 per meter to open up a, a mining tunnel. And we've got 120 kilometers there to, to, to look around in. And it costs about $10,000 a meter to uh, develop a shaft. And so there's a significant, in, in what we've already accessed and previously announced, there's a lot of saving that we don't have to, that's already been done for us. And what about the orientation of the ore body or ore bodies themselves? What, what, what sort of geology are we looking at? And what I'm really getting at is are they vertical, and so you can long hole open the stope head, or are they sort of horizontal lying, so you'll have to do some sort of other, you know, I don't know, room and pillar or whatever. But what's the, you know, what, what, what is the plan, the development plan in your head? And, uh, and how mechanised can it be? A bit too technical for me, uh, Charlie, but I'll do my best to answer this one. Um, it's an orogenic um, ore body. So it's, it, it's, it's the, real, the, the plan, really. It, it, typically with orogenic, I understand it's, it, can be, it, it can be very high grade, and so we're seeing that. So what the, the plan really is just to access um, enough of the existing infrastructure to delineate the first three years of mining. And so we'll be continuing to sample, we're doing some metallurgy work, and what we're going to then do is put together a feasibility. So we have an opportunity to own 50% of this mine by producing a report on the feasibility of reopening the mine. The other half of the mine is an ASX Explorer, a Southern Gold, and at which point when we form the joint venture, it becomes a contributing joint venture. So the goal really is over the next six months to be able to um, complete this report on the feasibility of reopening the mine. And that will tackle and, and address some of the things that you said. We, we expect it to be rather, rather mechanised. And so in terms of the timelines then, what are we looking at between where we are now, and you said you then you want to do the feasibility to delineate that, that mm -hmm. the three, first three years. So how long does that take? How much does it cost? How are you going to finance it? And, you know, in the best case scenario, when are we in production? Right, so, so I mean, so when, since we took the project on in April um, of this year, we, the company has basically been financed by the management. Um, that we've, we've put our own, own, own money into it. Today's announcement uh, have seen uh, Colin Patterson, the CEO, very experienced in underground mining and had some great success stories. He's offered to fund the company through to the pre-construction uh, phase. Um, as we've uh, stated today in today's RNS, so that's a very very positive um, for the for the company. Um, in terms of the timeline, over the next six months, we will put together 
um, this feasibility. There will be uh, more sampling, there'll be some metallurgy work, uh, and, and various other uh, studies to be able to put together this e an economic plan. And assuming that that has been completed, let's say at some point by over the next six months, that will be able to show us when we can go into production. Typically, production could take place 18 months after that point. We don't know the cost at the moment. When we entered into the joint venture with Southern Gold, the target was to have a capex of below $10 million, so not, not much, and of which we would be responsible for half of it. So um, then, there, of course, there'll be lots of options around debt funding and so forth at that particular time. So at the moment, we're not so much focused on that. We're focused on completing this feasibility and being able to demonstrate to the market that this mine that was South Korea's second largest mine is, is going to live again and it's going to yield lots more gold. So well, in terms of the funding through to the, the end of the bankable study then, is that, have you got funding for that or do you need to raise funding? No, we, 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 we just announced that today, that the funding has been um, committed by Colin Patterson. Okay, so that gets you all the way through then to the end of the bankable and then, and then presumably that's the point at which you, if all is successful, that's when you come back to the market and say, right, it's, you know, however much it is for yes, 50%. Yes, and today's funding actually is more than just this, this particular project. We actually state in the RNS that we're looking at another project within South Korea as well, that, and that today's funding would take us through to the completion of feasibility on, on, on that one as well, if we take it on. So is that the blue, blue sky exploration potential? Um, it's, again, it's, it's reopening a line. It's, it's not. It's not. Um, it's not really exploration. So two opportunities. Not, not. Not. just one opportunity. But could two. be. Could be. I mean, it's, we, we. 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 The funding is there to be able to do it. And then, so. do you have any idea as to sort of scale? Can you? You know, in, in terms of, of, of how much production in due course. Uh, we might be looking at from the mine, well, is it 100,000 ounces a year? Or? We've put out a conceptual, uh, or we've, we've, we've created internally a conceptual uh, mining plan that, that is evolving, uh, but we, we think it's going to be around initially around 30,000 ounces per year and then scaling and it up. And that's for 100% of the mine? That, so. that will be for 100% of the mine. Yeah, so triple all the U15. Yeah, yeah, and then scale it up to 50,000 into 100,000 ounces. Um, I think it's really going to depend on the outcome over the next six months, what we discover. There might might be some opportunities there via tailings or uh, via some gravity uh, processing to be able to start earlier. Uh, but this will all be known over the, over the coming months. Excellent. Aidan, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Aidan Bishop, Executive Director uh, of Bluebird Merchant Ventures there. And uh, opportunities abounding on the Korean Peninsula, and uh, as we alluded to, somewhere the way we haven't seen mining perhaps for uh, some years, or certainly a country that hasn't been uh, known for its mining uh, in recent times. But uh, but that's not to say that's, uh, that, that's not something that come back to it. So uh, opportunities there. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. This is me, Charlie Gibson. I'm signing off for The Mining Show, brought to you by Blythe Way uh, on Core Finance and until next week when we'll be bringing you uh, more such opportunities. Uh, have a very happy Christmas and uh, a capital day.